Are you ready? Oh yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious! Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome into the Gaming Hub. This is episode number 125, and this is a uh, timed patron-exclusive episode. Uh, we're going to be doing a review of uh, a game that we were both uh, really excited to play, Spider-Man. And uh, when I say both of us, I'm joined by Steven from our show. How are you? I'm good. Uh, my my, We're recording on, on a Sunday, and so yeah. I was just watching football all day. And my fantasy football team could have been doing much, 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 much better. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm sad it's Sunday and not looking forward to the rest of the week. But, you know, whatever. What can you do? Yeah, I hear you. But... That's all right. Uh, you know, we, we both got a chance to play Spider-Man. We're going to talk about that in a second. But first, I just want to tell everybody how you can take part in our community. Uh, if you're listening to us for the first time or if you've been listening for a while and just haven't joined in on the other stuff yet. So you can head on over to Facebook. Uh, the Gaming Hub Forum is there. And uh, join that. You can go to Twitch. Uh, we broadcast uh, every mainline episode of the Gaming Hub live on Twitch. Uh, either Friday or Saturday, and you can find that uh, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. From either Facebook or Twitch, you can get a link for Discord, which is uh, growing really quickly for us. We're really happy about that, and we get a lot of good conversation going on there, uh, where you can join in special community events, stuff like that that's going on, uh, community plays, things like that. We have a like a Madden franchise going on right now. We've got a lot of other stuff going on, so uh, please uh, join that if you're at all interested. And uh, we have a YouTube page, the Gaming Hub Podcast on YouTube as well. So if you want to help support the show, um, patrons get these episodes, the review ones, uh, about a week to 10 days earlier than everybody else. If you want to get it first, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash gaming hub. For as little as $2 a month, you can get early access to some patron time exclusive content, sometimes exclusive content. And uh, the other way is on Twitch. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. And if you choose to use that on us, we'd be really appreciative. If not, use it on somebody, help uh, support somebody, grow their channel, and uh, achieve the things they want to do. So, all right. With all that, Stephen, let's talk about Spider-Man. So I want to get your initial thoughts on the game. Because we both finished the mainline story. We haven't finished all the additional stuff to do. But what are your initial thoughts on the game now that you're done? Um, well, my initial thoughts is that it was just really fun to play. I enjoyed every minute I spent with it. Um, I, I don't know if I'm ready to go back right away now that I'm done. Um, but I, I could see myself playing again because the combat and all that and just the gameplay, it's just fun and it looks good and it, it's funny, it's charming, it's all the words, you know, that are <laughs> used. It's, it's a... <laughs> It's, it's yes, pretty spider man Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it's how I guess I'd best describe it as. Like, it's as charming as Spider-Man. And sometimes um, that can get lost in translation a little bit, uh, looking at Spider-Man 3 um, yeah. from, like, the comics and just all that, too. But the game was fun. It, it, I had a blast. And, and you know, you'll hear my score yeah. later, and you'll hear my more in-depth <clears throat> thoughts when we hit on each of the subjects. Yeah. But I enjoyed almost everything about the game so going in we were, we were both pretty hyped for the game and uh, did it live up to that for you or exceed it or what would you say i lived up to it okay lived up to it. okay that's fair um yeah for me i mean spider-man is a pretty unique superhero in that it brings in like a special kind of humor that a lot of others don't and whereas like my other favorite superhero or actually my favorite superhero is batman that's very dark and Batman's very dark and brooding and all that type of thing, you know, and Spider-Man's not that. It's very different. And I think that's a fair comparison considering that the Batman video games have been until now the gold standard for superhero video games. And I think there's a contender now or some kind of at least stiff competition for them with Spider-Man. I, I think Insomniac did a wonderful job and we'll we'll break it down. Uh, we're going to break it down in four different categories and then uh, give it a score. So let's do that. Let's talk about story first. And just fair warning, everybody, full spoilers are ahead. Um, 
So if you haven't played yet and you're planning on playing and you don't want a rune for you, uh, you might want to skip ahead to the end when we're talking about the score. But in terms of story, you know, I thought, Stephen, that it, it built up very well. I think that Act 3 is insane. There's like so much going on in Act 3. Um, do you wish that was spaced out more in, no. in the game or do you think they did it right? I think they did it right. I do too. Um, I, I wish I wouldn't have watched the E3 trailer. Yeah. Or, cause that, I mean, unfortunately gives away a lot of like the ending or not the ending ending, but the like ending of act two anyway. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's the, uh, the turn, I guess yep. would be the best word. Um, and I, I almost wish I didn't know about it. Cause I was like, is this coming? When's this coming? I saw it in E3. It's still not here. When is it happening? And I figured it'd be early on in the game and it's not. And it surprised me. Um, it makes sense why it wasn't. It was, mm -hmm. it, it was well placed, but I would rather have them have showed something a little earlier in the game. Um, okay. and maybe not even a story mission during E3. I, I feel like that was a mistake and I, mm -hmm. I was a little upset by that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at the time they were trying to show you, the character leveled up enough where there were enough powers to kind of show off what you can do and and see a bunch of the villains that we all know and recognize because that gets people excited, right? And it, the game kind of throws a curveball early on because through Acts 1 and 2, you are very much led to believe that Mr. Negative is the the like main villain in this game and you know one of the lesser known villains from spider-man but i think they did it really really well in a way that ties in you know aunt may and um mj and uh miles morales it plays a role in the game as well they i think they did that very well but then they kind of pull the rug out from under you and say nope you thought that was it but it's not so, did you like that kind of turn and how it turned into something much, much bigger? Uh, yes, but again, E3, I, I I, remember him uttering the lines like he told us not to kill him during the E3 trailer. I could uh, be wrong. Maybe. But that was in, in the game. Um, and so, I, I think I knew that Martin Lee or Mr. Negative wasn't the, uh, the main bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, it kind of like hurt a little bit and also i mean anyone who's seen the movies could kind of see how the story was headed um if you're paying yeah. attention yeah because like from the very beginning like i honestly thought it was going to happen like the first mission into the game i'm like oh because oh, i knew who it was yeah like because i because i've seen spider-man too and i'm like okay that's that it's not a coincidence like i i wonder if he's gonna become well we, we uh, said there's gonna be spoilers here so you can say the names like it's fine yeah I mean, it's, <laughs> so well as soon as doc, dr octavius was introduced yeah. in the game and something happened and he like i i don't remember if he got mad during the first mission or what i think yeah i think something failed uh yeah. during the first mission and he he got mad and he dropped a coffee cup or something and like I, from there i was like okay I, I have a feeling like doc ock is gonna make make a make his presence yeah. um and i i didn't know he'd be the the main bad guy um but so i guess that was cool i just again i really think part of the problem movies are guilty of this as well oh, with trailers? their trailers yeah. is they gave they give away too much and it's it sucks yeah but i mean that's not like a negative to the story the story was good um and i want to like bash on them for doing it for a long time but like I, I liked I liked the story quite a bit. Um, I think all the acts flowed smooth. I think all the acts were entertaining. Like the first act was like, all right, Spider Man kind of getting his like he just put away uh, Wilson Fisk. Yep, um, that's the very so first mission. Yes, and he's like, so he's like, okay, the city's now, you know, clean and safe and yeah, bad, yeah, safe and everything. And then it's like it kind of brings you in slowly. You could argue some of the story missions are a little slow early on, but I think that it's like a movie. You, the the yep. first 
half an hour setting the story or setting the tone for the rest of it. Yep. Um, and the game does the same thing. And then act the turn of act one into act two is when I'm like, damn. Yep. Um, the, the part at the, um, the rally or whatever, the little speech yes. yep. or, or presentation, I think was the mission that switched from act one to act two. Mm-hmm. And that's when the game really starts to, to take off. And then again, the turn from act two and act three is when it's like, Oh my gosh, there is a lot to take in. Yeah, there is. And yeah, it, I remember right after you finish the first mission, Fisk says to Spider-Man slash Peter Parker, you know, you're going to regret this. In a month, you'll be wishing I was back. And that's very much foreshadowing for what the game turned out to be. Because you're not necessarily wishing he was back, but you see the results and ramifications of him being gone. Whereas, you know, he claimed he kept the city under control. And what transpires after that really very much says that, yeah, he did. So it, it, the city kind of turns into chaos in a lot of ways, and not not suddenly, but very gradually throughout the course of the, of the story, which is about 25 hours, and it's a, it's a pretty good campaign. So, but yeah, early on you get the sense, like I wasn't quite sure, Stephen, early with the, because you get to play as Peter Parker, and you spend a lot of that time in one of two places, either at the like feast center with Aunt May and uh, Mr. Lee early on, or with Dr. Octavius in the lab, where you actually get to do some cool little mini games and stuff uh, with you know science stuff, and it unlocks some stuff for you, and it's pretty cool. But I wasn't sure if they were setting him up to be more of a sequel or DLC, or if we were going to see him in you know later in the game turn into um doc ock i I just wasn't sure but the the way it played out i I really enjoyed and and you're right like the game ramps up huge when that like metal ceremony happens and you, you start to see the level of what kind of what's going on but um i do want to ask you like you don't just play spider man you play as peter parker you also play as mj and you play as miles morales so in those MJ missions and Miles Morales missions where they're very much stealth missions, did you enjoy those as much? No. So how come? <laughs> I didn't either. They're, they're bad stealth missions. They take away from the fun of playing as Spider-Man. You, you want to go back to playing Spider-Man every time you, you play as either of them. Yep. And they're just, they're just slow, but also stupid. If in a way, there yeah. are parts where like you should be noticed. Yes, <laughs> um, and you're not, and it's just like, all right, this is ridiculous. And there were missions where I just literally sprinted through, and there was one mission in the uh, as MJ in who was it Tombstones like uh, bike shop where there every like the checkpoint had like its own cutscene, and you could literally like sprint there before the bar filled up with making as much noise as possible. And the cutscene would start and everything would be reset. And so I did that and I got through it really, really fast. I don't yeah. know if you noticed that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I skipped, like I tried to do that whenever I could because there, it wasn't that fun. No, it's uh, really not. And I get why they, that they're there, but I think the one they did the best was the one in grand central terminal where you're playing primarily as MJ, but you're setting up Spider-Man to take down enemies. Yeah. And that one worked pretty well because the the Spider-Man element's there. When I buy a Spider-Man game, you know, I'm not doing that to do stealth missions as one of the other characters. I'm doing it to play a Spider-Man because that's awesome. But, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, you know, I get why they're there. I just... I thought that was the weak part of the campaign, and I feel like there's a few too many of them. Yes. So, and especially in Act 3, I feel like they felt that like they had to get one more in for each of them towards the oh end. Oh, gosh. And I'm like, oh, I just want to get to the end because I can see where this is going, and I want to get there. I but... died like three times during the Miles one, mm-hmm. and then I didn't die during the MJ one at the end, but it was like, oh, my gosh, and it was so long. Yeah. Uh, basically what ends up happening is you all the 
or a lot of the most popular Spider-Man villains or most well-known ones get released from the raft at the end of Act 2. And Doc Ock's behind it. And a lot of Act 3 is spent, you know, defeating those villains and ultimately Doc Ock in the end. Like, were you satisfied? And we'll talk about the mechanics of them in a minute when we get to gameplay, but were you satisfied with those, um, the way that story unfolded and how you kind of took on each one? Yes. I was too. I was. So they were a little hard. They could be, yeah. There, there were a couple. Um, the Rhino one yes, was so was a little difficult. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep, with Scorpion yep. and, as well. Yep. And I'll tell you, don't think that this is an easy game. It is not. You will, especially early on, you will die a few times. Yeah, yes. Until you learn. Yep. It, this is no bad. If you go in trying to play like Batman, like basically what I did, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you probably did the same did. thing, you're going to die. It's not Batman where you just like you, you counter and you punch, 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 wait for them to attack, counter, punch, 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 punch. Um, it's not like that. No. Nope. Uh, obviously, Spider-Man's not that type of. Mm -hmm. You you got to play it like Spider-Man would. Yeah. And it makes it more fun, and we'll get into that when we get into gameplay. Yeah. But, Which we're gonna yeah. do here in just a second. But ultimately, I think Insomniac stayed very true to Spider-Man lore. And they delivered a very good story. I was really satisfied with it. And I'm actually really looking forward to the DLC, which is uh, towards the end of October, I believe. So really looking forward to digging into that. And even though that's in the window where, like, Call of Duty's on, Red Dead's right around the corner, I'm probably still going to play it. So, all right. All right. Let's move into the, the gameplay aspect. And... You know, a couple of things I really want to touch on is obviously the swinging mechanics. That's a huge part of any Spider-Man game. Um, also, the fighting mechanics. So, let, let's go to swinging first. So, how did you feel that that was? Was it responsive for you? Did you like that, uh, traversing around the city? Oh, I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels, like, accurate. Um, if, if you're... it's You can't just go from... You can't turn 90 degrees and keep your momentum without doing it correctly. Like, you have to swing around yeah. a building to, to do it. You can't, like, just turn in midair and hope to keep your momentum. Um, and it, it is easy to kind of stop your flow or whatever. Uh, but it, it's fun. And it makes sense. Like, if there's something around you could potentially hook your web onto, you can swing. And if there's not, then you can't. Like, if there's no building, you're going to be falling until you can find a building to... Um, hook onto and then yeah. swing around early in the game I, I i found there was a learning curve to it i don't know about you but early in the game i found myself not timing it right not doing things right and i'd get you know where i'd be climbing up a wall on a building um to get to a position where i can start swinging again by the end though i'm traversing around the city with ease and it's just really fun um so it's not it's not necessarily super easy but it's really fluid and it works I, I liked it quite a bit. Yeah, I, I did too. Um, the only issue I had with the traversal was w when when you had to get to a point where you had to stop in a certain spot, it could be a pain just because of how fast Spider-Man moves to get to there. Yes. Like, I found myself, like, having... I, I went... I'd press the button, and it would go to the other side of the building, and then I'd fall off, and then I'd have to climb back up, and then I'd shoot, and I'd shoot, overshoot it. And that happened yeah. quite a few times, even at the end of the game. And it, it was a little annoying. Um, and there was no good way to, like, to like slow down. Like, if you could, like, hold a trigger and then, like, get off, or, or like, get out of quick mode, basically, so yeah. you could control and, like, more fine-tune it, mm -hmm. I think it would have been better. It's These are minor, minor, minor gripes. Yeah. But when everything else feels so smooth, then you really notice the stuff that doesn't, and that was one of them. Yeah, that happened for me a few times, especially with, like, the backpacks, which we'll talk about with, like, the extra stuff you can do in the world. Yeah. But, yeah, but I found the traversal to be really strong. So, how about the fighting mechanic? Like, the combat. Did you enjoy that? It, it's It's enough like Batman, in my opinion, that it's familiar, but it's also incredibly different. Yes, I, I I agree with that. I did like it. I didn't I didn't like it so much at first because I didn't I didn't understand it, and I got sick of seeing the the game over screen or whatever, yeah. and having to restart. Uh, but once I started understanding that like 
you can't take like you if you got hit like three times like you could die like three times was their limit or, or in your your first health pool um and if you got hit with the rocket especially uh early on in the game and so you had to be quick and you had to learn how to like take enemies out but once i learned how to use all the abilities um in in sync with each other oh man it was it's fun to go into the like bases and do the fighting just that's what i would do i'd be like i'd go to the bases and be like all right i can fight a bunch of enemies here let me see exactly what i can do with this combo yeah because early in the game you get sent to one of the bases right it's sometime during act one yes and, like it's one of the first missions yeah and that was a little frustrating for me at least just because i hadn't gotten the combat down yet and and I remember you telling me we were talking over chat like while we were playing and you're like, oh, go back and do more. They're really fun. And as and you're right, as I leveled up and got better at combat, I'm like, yes, they're incredibly fun. And that's not to say they're easy. You're not overpowered in them, but you get a better understanding of how to go about doing it. Yeah. So uh, I, I found that to be really good. Last thing I want to talk about with kind of the gameplay and mechanics is the amount of QTE stuff that's in there. So the quick time events, especially with the boss fights or like things that end sort of a mission at times, did you feel like there were too many or did it flow well enough for you in the, in the game? Cause that's been one of the complaints out there is okay, that there's way so, too much of it. So you could call me a cheater and that's fine. I turn in the settings you can go on the advanced settings and turn button mashing to where you just have to hold the button so i didn't have i had no complaints okay. and i did it for god of war 2 and um i to me button mashing is stupid i i don't want to break my controller hitting the, the square button or the bx button or the b button whatever yeah. have you five million times it's stupid sure so i i like the fact that i was allowed to switch it to where i just have to hold it and so I, it's more of a reaction thing like be quick and then you hold it and you're good mm -hmm. um and i so i think they were there because there was no other real way to do some of the stuff like when you're trying to stop a car like what else what how are you going to do it yeah. without either pressing the right or r1 l1 in quick succession or just hold or pressing square mashing square so i i don't know what how, how they could have avoided it without just turning everything into cutscenes, And I, I think that would make people unhappy too. I, it, yeah. I think it's a case of you're, you're just going to complain either way. Yeah. Um, maybe not the same people, but the same amount of people will complain. Yeah. Um, so I had no issue with it. And I do recommend turning that off and I recommend mm. turning it off in any game that has the option to where you can switch it to just holding the button. Mm. Because did you have it set to that, or did you have no, the button mash? No, I, I had to button mash, and I wish I had known that, because I would have done it. But, yeah, the... I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, this is one of the things that got a lot of criticism. I feel like some people just aren't happy unless they aren't happy. And, you know, it's it's much it's much better for some people to get on message boards and whatever and complain, because that gets you more attention, honestly. And... Like, I feel like that's kind of what some people want to do. And it didn't it didn't adversely affect the game for me in any way. Like, I didn't feel like, oh, that's a letdown. I did all this to get to this, and then it's a, like, QTE, you know, sequence. No, I mean, how are you supposed to do it? That, that's what I mean. It would just be a cutscene otherwise. And, yeah. again, people would complain about that, and it would be boring. Or do, you just, every... or do you just want it to be something where you hit, you know, Fisk enough or Doc Ock enough or whoever, and they just fall over? Yeah, that's like, pretty boring as yeah, well. Yeah, so I just, I don't know. I, I felt like they did it as well as they could. I mean, there's, when you end these, like, epic battles or moments in the game, it, it's always a challenge to figure out how to end it. I, and I don't have a problem with quick time events, and maybe one day on our show we'll get into a debate over quick time events um, on our normal show. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I think they were fine in this case. There's, yeah, there were a, lot, a decent amount of them, but mm -hmm. I don't think they were a crazy amount. There's only one game I've ever played that I felt overdid them, which was Rise. Yeah. So, but that's a, a different thing for a different time. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I was fine with them in this game. And, yeah. you know, I'm glad you feel the same way. So, all right, let's talk about the world. But real quick, yeah, real go quick, ahead, go before ahead. the world. 
Uh, just quick advice for anyone combat uh, doing the combat section. Like, don't do what I did and try to knock everyone out like I did in Batman or like you yeah. do in Batman because mm -hmm. you can't. That's not a, the best way to play. You try to try to web them to something because then they're out of the fight and it's quicker. If yep. you can web them to a wall, then it's the best. But that's that's all I wanted. To, yeah, to play say. around with the gadgets there. and get used to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and incorporate them as much as you can because I would go through moments in the game where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to fight everybody, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I have all these gadgets. And it took me a while to just get used to that. But once I did, like, it was it, it was not only easier, it was a lot more fun. Yes. So, all yeah. right. All right, so the world. So it's set in Manhattan. And... Man, that it's pretty detailed. I I enjoyed the the world and going around and seeing a lot of the cool landmarks that are in New York City. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'd agree. I I know there were some gripes from from uh, some reviewers that didn't like that the majority of the game was outside, um, and they wanted to be able to uh, like explore Peter Parker's apartment, for instance. Uh, I remember reading that and some other stuff and like all the. All the inside stuff is mission based, but I, the outside was so detailed. I don't know how you can complain. Um, and again, I yes, okay, I it'd be okay to explore Peter Parker's apartment for a little bit, but how many times would you actually do it? You would probably do it once, and then you would be done and go back to playing Spider Man for the rest of the game. And I I think that's an unfair criticism because the outside is extremely detailed. Like there are a lot things that are in the real world Manhattan. And then there are things that are in Marvel or the Marvel universe Manhattan. And, um, and I don't want really to want to spoil some, some of the stuff if you guys hadn't seen it uh, yet, but there's some cool, like East, there's a lot of Easter eggs in this game hidden throughout that are really fun to go find. Um, and I do recommend doing that. If you were one that just like, you just played the main missions um, and you, you didn't do any of the collectible stuff. Because you're missing a lot of the fun features of the game. Um, and the reason I, I, I say spoiler free is because I'm hoping that the people that li are listening that wanted to skip the spoilers just skipped the story section part and went on. So that's why I'm going to keep try to keep the rest of this as yeah, spoiler free not, as possible. Not at all a problem. And I'm with, I'm with you. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I needed to be inside that much. No. Because the cool part about being Spider-Man is swinging through the city. Yep. So that's the part of the game that I want to be detailed and good. But when you're climbing up a building and you look in a window, it's not just bland. There's like actual furniture inside and stuff like that. Like pretty much wherever you go in the city. Yeah. It's and somebody did a great job building the world, I think. They did. And it's not without his host of glitches. I right. I actually didn't run into too many, maybe one or two, but I did see a lot where people got stuck inside buildings. I think the yeah. Empire State Building was one of the big culprits mm -hmm. um, that you could you could get stuck. Like, basically, the game thought you were falling, but you were never moving. So you were just kind of in the middle of the top of the tower of it. But that's going to happen when you try to make Manhattan in a video game. Like, there's a lot to the world. And yep. so, yeah. But I... I I, I played it in both 4K and just regular HD, and 4K looked absolutely stunning. And it then did. even just regular HD looked good. Yep. Um, not as good. There was a noticeable drop off that I that I noticed because I just played in 4K so much, but it still looked great. Um, and I have no complaints about the art and the, yep. the graphics. And, and just like how I was really impressed with what you know Ubisoft did with the division with New York City, I'm equally impressed here. I think they did a really good job in building the game. And the division has faults in other ways we're not going to get into, but in terms of building that world and having a lot of the landmarks you're used to, like they're there. So yeah. I think they did a really good job with that. And I'm with you on the world. Like there's glitches, but there's glitches in every single game, man. I don't, I know, you know, and, and I'm not saying that to you. It's like, you know, we got a comment on one of our episodes, like Spider-Man's broken mess. Okay. I, I didn't experience that, and I don't. I don't know if you understand what a broken mess is, but okay. Like I just, I didn't experience that at all. Like, are you saying it's broken mess because it had one or two glitches in the game? Uh, every game has those. So, I mean, I don't know. If you if you're looking for it, you're gonna find it, I guess. And but if you go and wanting to have fun with this game, you're gonna have a blast. But, all right. 
So let's talk about all the extra stuff you can do. Because there's a lot. It's not there just is. the story. And Insomniac's really good at this. They did the same thing with Sunset Overdrive. With a lot of collectibles and side missions and things to do that extend the life of the game out. Yeah, though the collectibles in Sunset were nearly as fun to get as the collectibles in Spider-Man. Yeah, and I agree with that. And I think they learned from it. I think this is the just the next step for them in that. Because I think they applied a lot of the traversal things, too, uh, that they learned in Sunset to this game. But it, it shows that they learned from all that as well. Um, you know, what uh, What were your favorite side missions? And Well, first, let's kind of detail what some of them are. Go ahead. All right, so you, you have backpacks to collect that include, like, it's a lot of stuff from Spider-Man's, like, younger days. Um, back probably when he was in high school and just getting out. Cause at this point in the story, he, he's not working at the daily profit anymore. So Spider-Man daily bugle, little, but yeah. or the daily bugle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was Superman. Uh, <laughs> he's not working at the daily bugle. So it's, it's a decent amount into Spider-Man's probably twenties. Um, yeah. so there's a lot of like a lot of the stuff in the backpack is stuff from his high school and early twenties. And it, it's pretty cool to collect. And honestly, I just, Really, I, I stopped doing the, the, the missions. As soon as the backpacks were available, I collected all of them. Yeah. Um, and But my favorite things to do were the the, the souvenir, or, yeah, the pictures. Um, the landmarks, yeah. Could, yeah, landmarks. Yep. That's what it was. You could go around taking pictures of the landmarks and the, the three Easter eggs that were there, and there might have been a few more that I'm forgetting. But there were three that I didn't expect, and I – I guess I just didn't pay attention to like the because they were shown in the um, like trailer and they were they yeah. were they were known and I just missed it. So I when I came across, it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, mm-hmm. But those were fun. And then there's like there's these crime missions that just kind of populate randomly um, where you have to stop people from doing a drug deal or a car chase or robbery or something. Those are all pretty fun. There's base missions where you go in and have to defeat waves of enemies. And then there's um there's a couple like challenges uh, that mm-hmm. that the guy asks you to, to do. There's like combat stealth and like flying through and chasing after a drone and trying to fly through the little blue excuse me orbs um, to get points. Mm-hmm. Those are those are hard. Um, yes. And I then yeah they're not easy. And I thought I was good at the game. And then I did those and I'm like what only silver? How am I supposed to get I know. gold? <laughs> um but. And then there's side missions, too, and the side missions are, are pretty good. Um, yeah. So there, there's a decent amount. There might be a couple things I'm missing. Yeah, so um, just a, a couple I'll add under the research stations. And oh, yeah. And you can go and get research points, which you can apply to, like, suits or other things that you can get that are um, upgradable for you. And then the black hat Yeah, missions, and then which, the, the doves. Yeah, and the doves. Yep, yep. Yes. So, so, oh, and, and all of those... Um, challenges or side missions give you like coins like tyler mm-hmm. kind of implied with the research coins and all those can be used to upgrade the gadgets or, or get suits and there's a lot of suits in the game um i think it's 28 total if i remember right yeah it's so, about right yep. um and so there's kind of a I like looking on one of the groups i'm in on facebook like everyone seemed to have their own favorite and i liked that because you know there's yeah. kind of something for everybody um, I still think the Iron Spider suit's the best suit in the game, mm-hmm. but I'm sure there are a lot of people that will disagree with me, mm-hmm. and that's okay. Uh, but I, yeah, it was fun just kind of collecting those two. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And and when you like unlock all the things to do, and then you look at the map, like there is just a ridiculous amount of stuff to do in this game. Yeah. And it it extends the game by easily ten hours. Yes. So now you're looking at a 35-hour game, which is pretty awesome, you know, for uh, for a game that's pretty fast-paced and, you know, story-driven. It's not as deep and immersive as your Witchers or Skyrims or stuff like that, but it's not meant to be. But you still get, if you want to do all of it, a good 35, maybe even 40 hours out of the game, which is great. So I, I love all that stuff. My my favorites, I'm with you. I like the backpacks. Those are fun to get because you get to see all the little stuff from like Spider-Man lore. Yeah. Like when, especially like the younger Spider-Man days, the high school days, stuff like that, which we see in like every Spider-Man reboot movie, you know? Um, and then the, the landmarks I really enjoy because you see the detail they put in a lot of this stuff. And it's a mixture of like real Manhattan 
because like one of them just you know this is not really a spoiler but one of them was like Madison Square Garden you know and yeah, the Statue of Liberty <laughs> yeah and then you have stuff that is from the Marvel Universe and they combine it together so well and it's it's just really well done the, the Black Hat stuff is kind of fun the side missions I found I had a really good time with and I haven't done them all yet but the ones I've done I've had a really good time with the so some of the later ones were a little eh. yeah um they they kind of fell off to be honest mm-hmm. um but some of the some of them were really fun yeah the the bases are almost like a mini like horde mode type of thing it's just waves of enemies coming at you it's it, there's a lot of stuff in there for people who like to do different types of things and it's not all geared towards the same type of player which I love and that's that's really cool so I enjoyed that as well. All right. Anything else on the extra stuff? No, the black cat stuff. I know set up, it's setting up for DLC, which yeah. is confirmed. I, how many? Do you know how many pieces of DLC there's going to be? Is there three. four? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. So and the new game plus coming. Um, yeah. I, I know you said you're going to play the new DLC when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to wait for all of them to come out and then probably have one more playthrough of the game. Okay. Um. And I'm hoping they're all out by the end of the year so I can mm-hmm. maybe get another playthrough in before Kingdom Hearts comes out in January, but okay. we'll see. All but right. that's that's my plan, because I would yeah. like to play the game again. It was really fun. Well, this game is, like, fun and just kind of silly in some ways, but still challenging in enough ways to make it, you know, rewarding to accomplish things. And I feel like that'll be a really good, like, departure from games like, you know, Red Dead or Battlefield or Call yeah. of Duty when those games arrive. So... Yeah, and I'd actually wish instead of a new game plus or on top of it, they'd, they'd add a, uh, the ability to replay story missions because there's mm. some story missions I would like to redo without having to start the whole game over, you know? Yeah. Um, the ending is one of them. Yes. And then the, the ending to act one I, or the mission right before the ending to act one. Okay, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. No, wait, wait. It's the ending to act two? I don't know. The one where you're chasing the helicopter. Loved that mission. Oh, I'd that's like Act 2. It. That's Act 2. Um, yeah, I don't think it's... Okay, so it's like the middle of Act 2. Yeah. I'd like to redo that one, uh, but we'll okay. see. All yeah. right, yeah, and they and they might bring that. Um, yeah, let's hope. As far as sales numbers are, I don't know. I haven't seen early sales figures. They haven't really released anything. Um, but I would assume the game's done very well. You know, Sony has a very loyal fan base, and, you know, whenever an exclusive comes out, especially, you know, they were really smart to get this game out in early September, before the you know legion of super triple a's comes out starting in october so i I think uh sales for this game will be pretty good and i think we'll see a lot of support for it going forward and insomniacs actually said that you know they've given sony a ton of praise for how they've kind of handled um overseeing the the making of the game and uh helping insomniac make the best game they can so i i think we'll see a lot of support going forward but anyway let's uh Let's give this game a score. So, Stephen, I want to go to you first. Uh, we're doing a, a ten out of ten, uh, you know, scale. What would you give Spider Man? Probably a nine point one. Okay. Just yeah, I'm gonna add the point one. Um, okay, so <laughs> I, I it, it was a great game, and <laughs> there's a lot, a lot. I just had fun with it, and it was yeah, and that's why. All right, it's better than a nine for me. All right, nine point one. You know, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, I, I wasn't thinking that detailed. I was planning on saying a nine. <laughs> um, so I'll say a nine point one one. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Um, no, I'll go with a nine. It's uh, it, to me, this is, it does everything it aims to do. In my opinion, and it's exactly the type of game I love playing. It's a ton of fun. If Man, if you're focused on a couple glitches in the game and stuff like that, that's why it's not a 10. But if you're focused on that, I I don't know what to tell you. Like, the game is fun, and it's a good time going around the city. The missions are well done. The story is well done, uh, minus the, like, stealth stealth missions. That's another reason it's not quite at that, like, 10 level for me, or or at least, like, a 9.5. Um, I could have done without some of those. I get that some of them are necessary. But all in all, super fun. Really enjoyed it. And uh, I'll go with 9 out of 10. All right. So we both recommend for everybody to buy it. 
is we basically do. what we're saying. <laughs> All right. That's the gist. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this up then. Uh, Spider-Man, great game. Get it, everybody. If you haven't yet, if you have a PlayStation, um, get the game. The only thing that sucks about this is that it's console exclusive, which I just really don't like at all. Uh, either way, uh, whether it's on Xbox or PlayStation, but it is what it is. So uh, if you have a PlayStation and you're able to get the game, I uh, highly recommend that you do it. So, all right, let's get out of here. Uh, once again, you can join our community by uh, going to Facebook and looking up the Gaming Hub forums. You can go to Twitch, TXH Gaming Hub there. From either of those places, there's a link to Discord. And uh, please join our Discord community. Uh, we have some great conversation going on there. Uh, and that's where the most lively chat is uh, pretty much all the time. So uh, if you want to help support the community, you can do that as well on Twitch. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sum to use every single month. And if you choose to use that on us, we'd really appreciate it. If not, like I said earlier in the show, use it on somebody. Uh, help support them get better and, and achieve their goals. So also we have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gaming hub. Uh, we put out episodes just like this one that are going to be time patron exclusives for uh, our patrons that help support our community can listen to early. All right. See you anything else before we go. No, that's it for me. All right. So this has been episode number 125 of the Gaming Hub. And we'll be back uh, soon with episode 126. Until then, everybody, uh, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.